for some men, you know, you should lower the dose, but if that doesn't work, they still have these problems. What are they supposed to do? They potentially think they have all the answers because they've talked to three or four doctors. If you can get someone to lose body fat, they were going to reduce the amount of aromatase enzyme they have. There are some people who naturally have high levels of dopamine and they're very successful entrepreneurs. Uh, they get on with their life and they've got that extra drive, which the testosterone should be doing for the dopamine, but may not always be, be doing. I know where some of the guys are coming from who are absolutely no AI evangelical. Of men that come on TRT are actually deficient in estradiol, you know, in, yeah. in general. And, and a lot of the symptoms of low testosterone mimic low estrogen. And obviously, we know testosterone is essentially three drugs in one, you know, with the two metabolites, estradiol and, mm -hmm. and dihydrotestosterone. It may not be purely estrogen either. You know, the testosterone itself may, may target bits of, in, in the breast tissue, possibly, where you feel more live, more blood flow, and therefore yeah. you associate this nipple sensitivity, as some guys say, or this increased blood flow to having early stage gyno when I, you know, after three weeks, I, I hardly would, would think that would be the cause. And, and we've seen that right. from some patients, there's this, this paranoia that either the breast will somehow become feminized. But then there are a couple of papers out there that talk about venous leakage, presence of TRT and high enough testosterone levels. When the estradiol hits almost an absolute range, they've, they've demonstrated that this may cause for certain men to have this venous leakage problem, which is a form of yep. erectile dysfunction, yep. uh, especially on the base of the penis. So again, everything is so specific to that individual man, low SHBG, smaller, more frequent doses do work better. And the guys yeah. with high SHBG can tolerate larger, more bolus doses. So I, I'm sure they probably correspond with that. People who have the low SHBG, if they're doing the smaller, more frequent doses, then that, that will bring it up. But I, I've not seen much movement on it at all. All, all we're trying to do is accommodate. So I can see that there's a certain focus that some people had well let's just manipulate the shbg and well the shbg is the shbg then you the way you maybe maybe it's reminiscent of you know non-alcoholic fatty liver disease potentially or, or um have you got a new name for it now or maybe it's a part of metabolic syndrome you know have shbg and now you've got to fine tune we, we thought to, to kind of to fix those problems first and i think that's yeah. where you're going with the estrogen problems as well if mm -hmm. you can get someone to lose body fat they were going to reduce the amount of aromatase enzyme they have. The, the best case scenario is not having the AI. And I, and I know where some of the guys are coming from who are absolutely no AI evangelicals because it's a pain in the bloody ass to have to time a dosing with a tablet, with your TRT. I can see where the simplicity is if we can uh, modulate our dose, then, then we're not going to have you know, we can minimize this, but uh, you know, there are other factors going on. And I think that will take us into the, to the next topic is the, the role of dopamine in, in all of this. And, you know, testosterone almost can act and, and you can pull some of the studies as an MAOA and to a smaller degree MAOB inhibitor. You, you know, as a result, maybe this is why some people do feel better on testosterone, but there's a whole group of both neurodivergent people, which, you know, would be like ADHD and, and these other conditions who either need more dopamine uh, or don't make enough dopamine. And, and, yeah. and therefore, you know, TRT is a big help, but, but not always enough. And it's always uh, an interesting one for me is that, you know, it's funny that psychiatry never dipped their toe in the water when it came to testosterone and rather use all right. these artificial medications to kind oh, of exactly. to play with your, your different monoamines and, and, and the like. But so a lot of our guys come across dopamine in terms of prolactin and prolactin control. We can see guys who start TRT, usually in the early days of testosterone replacement therapy, will see a rise in prolactin in the first six months. And sometimes it will normalize, sometimes it won't. Other times it'll be up because they've been on SSRIs or on the proton pump inhibitors like uh, omeprazole and, and the like. And, and as a result, they never get the, the prolactin to go down and they never get the full benefit of, of the TRT because they've got these other things in the way like prolactin. And just so everyone who's, who's watching what they know, prolactin is the opposite of dopamine. When prolactin's higher, the dopamine's usually lower. This is what happens, you know, after an ejaculation. So there are tools 
to help people, but they're, they're still quite primitive. And, uh, and again, just like with the aromatase inhibitors, they might not be the full solution. How one could potentially minimize the negatives of, of a high prolactin, low dopamine life. So when, so, I, when I first started TRT, I had seen an endocrinologist and um, I've seen lots of endocrinologists, but this one in particular, and we noticed my estradiol was quite high. I was actually on the testosterone cream. And he said, well, you know, I think that's when they did my MRI. So I think the reason we don't see anything on the, on the MRI while your prolactin's so high, but it, 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 we think it might be the estradiol. So at that time, and it was insane when we look at it through today's lens, is that uh, they put me on a milligram a day of an astrazole uh, at, at the time, which was a really stupidly high dose. But it did bring down the prolactin. Yeah, so in Kimberglin is one of, of the medications, by the way, for um, and probably one with the least side effects on a day to day yeah. basis. So one that you can take very infrequently, you know, you know, when I've had it prescribed, it's been as, as little as a quarter of a milligram every every 10 days, 11 days, two weeks sometimes. Wow. And it gets it, you know, as well below the studies, you know, uh, it would probably take me another 30 years or 40 years before I'd you know, have to worry about further damage to the um, uh, to the valves but, but there are other uh, medications in especially in the in the uk and in europe uh, one is called quinagolide that's a very potent d2 agonist now what i've seen a lot on on, on youtube and the internet is a big push for uh, permipaxel as well because permipaxel is believed to um, be safe but that hits you know d2 and, and, and d3 actually primarily d3 and d3 can make you very sleepy very sleepy, you get a sudden onset of sleep at certain times, which is odd because, you know, a dopamine agonist should make you more alert and be more stimulating. So some people are cautious about the dopamine agonist. There are studies, I don't know if you follow in psych psychiatry, that, you know, it can be used as an antidepressant in some patients, especially uh, major depressive disorder, when nothing else yeah. seems to work. And it, it brings people like that out of out of their, their depression, you know, even in spite of, of TRT. But the fear is the impulse control disorder. It gives you a little bit of hypersexuality and feeling like you can you can do some really great, great things. Uh, but yeah. uh, it's not. Uh, so something to be aware of, you know, but I, I, I think it's been. There's been too much fear on that. If if people need to be aware that this is a possibility, if they were on these medications, and that the other people around them should try to constrain if if there are such behaviors, because if you're aware of it, it shouldn't bring your whole fortune crashing down because of this. Right. You know, because there are some people who naturally have high levels of dopamine, and they're very yeah. successful entrepreneurs. Uh, they get on with their life, and they've got that extra drive, which the testosterone should be doing for the dopamine, but may not always be be doing so i just thought i'd mm -hmm. i share with that because it's a little bit i would say it's a little bit of a taboo topic within the trt community and maybe in some cases it's a slight missing piece for some some patients but again yeah. with all this less is more the less medication you need to be on the better but but that that leads into another you know factor is a lot of men are afraid to go on testosterone replacement therapy because they're worried about taking testosterone for life and now you go down the route of you know, dopamine agonists, I've always found that, you know, with some of our patients, they, they can come off of it quite easily, you know, provided there's been enough space between when the dosing is around, you know, stopping some of these substances, or maybe it's just a patient specific who, even though they're on TRT, that they're still not getting the satisfactory uh, sexual improvements. Propion being a dopamine reuptake uh, inhibitor, meaning it keeps more dopamine around the brain a bit longer. Uh, without it being transported and, and taken back up again. That one's an interesting one. It's been around for over 40 years. Yeah. Um, it's kind of a dirty drug in a way, almost a pro yeah. drug in the sense that there's so many different off-target side effects. And it's this probably only because it's been studied that long and there's many of its metabolites that are active and, and last longer. There's also known as, well, butrin in the U.S. and Zyban mm -hmm. for the smoking cessation, or even I think Zyban is the same as Wellbutrin SR. And uh, But many people will, will swear by Wellbutrin, the ones who, if they need to take an antidepressant, because you know we know in the world of TRT, the SSRI antidepressants are absolutely awful. Uh, to what to many people for you know improving libido. Obviously, there's some men that absolutely need to take them. Some men will need to take metazepine to fall asleep or to to, to quell some of their anxiety. Um, it's interesting 
how some of these uh, psychiatric medications are all labeled and, and siloed into certain certain functions. And so essentially, if you want to think about it, ibuprofen is just kind of a, a neatly packaged form of cocaine, in, in a sense, because cocaine is a, a, um, a, what do you call it, a dopamine reuptake inhibitor with the benefit of improving norepinephrine, right? So you know, in small cases, there are there's a whole area of of medicine that's looking at ways to improve hyposexuality. You know, including uh, the future study of kisspeptin as a potential mm -hmm. option for. Yeah, uh, we did some studies in the UK. There's not us, but uh, there's some studies in the UK done oh, yeah. through the NHS using kisspeptin. Not not ten, but there's a different one. I think maybe fifty. Um, yeah, fifty. Where they did an infusion of of kiss peptin and some guy said he got his wife pregnant shortly after who was uh, involved yeah. in the study so there is a need testosterone fixes a lot of the problems for many people and then the other thought is there are some studies from the 70s that show bupropion may even lower prolactin um, but it's always a mixed bag because the people they put in the studies <laughs> don't always right. match up with the kind of maybe the patient base that we're looking at and there may yeah. be other confounding factors where oh they were on ssri and they put in bupropion. Well, of course, the SSRI is going to raise the prolactin. And they're never really good studies though, from what I've seen when it comes to that and, and loads loads of potential side effects. But at the same time, many, many people use it and, 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 and don't have an issue. So again, that's something that they discuss with their doctor. Thanks for watching Balance My Hormones. If you found this video helpful, please give a thumbs up, share it with a friend and hit the subscribe button for more TRT and HRT insights. Explore our website at balancemyhormones.co.uk for our blood tests, our free testosterone calculator, and all the tools you need to take control of your health. Together, we're making hormone therapy simple, safe, and effective. See you in the next video.